I have this powerful stage play I would like to pitch, title, Forgotten Hollywood Icon. It's a one-man play that chronicles the Hollywood career of actor, James Edwards. You see, James Edwards was a pioneering actor who was among Hollywood's first, years ahead of Sidney Poitier, to crush the step it fetch its stereotype of black males as shiftless illiterates. For much of the 1950s and 60s, Sidney Poitier was the standard bearer for all of black Hollywood, his stardom held aloft as a beacon of integration and progress. In reality, the movie industry remained largely segregated and out of step with the developments of the civil rights era, the Poitier mythology not only obscured this truth, but it also dwarfed the contributions of other African American actors, some of whom paved the way for Poitier's ascent. No one deserves more credit for presaging the stereotype-breaking characters that Poitier perfected than James Edwards, who in 1949, shot from anonymity to stardom in producer Stanley Kramer's controversial melodrama, Home of the Brave. Gifted, outspoken, and unwilling to accept the demeaning caricatures that blacks often played on screen, Edwards was heralded as the first African-American actor to topline a major studio feature in a straight dramatic role. James Edwards became a movie idol overnight, fan clubs sprang up all over the American and his activities were cover in the mainstream press, the papers romantically linked him to Lena Horne, but he had aspiring actress Jane White who was the daughter of Walter White, chair of the NAACP on his arms. He basked in the celebrity and loved his newfound fame as the handsome, unmarried lead of a wildly successful motion picture that everyone was talking about, never before had an black actor been referred to as a Hollywood sex symbol. There he was on top of the world, James Edwards the regular guy from Indiana. That's what he referred to himself when he arrived in each town, that's what he referred to himself in each of his interviews, meeting, and speeches. Well, James Edwards the regular guy from Indiana was about to become under fire, from white American, the FBI, and even some black working actors. At many of the luncheons he spoke at, he made speeches declaring that he was proud to be a part of the struggle for racial equality. That he was a representative black artists and artistry fighting discrimination, he proclaimed that it was his responsibility and accept the responsibility in the name of his people, in the name of all people to help put an end to all discrimination in the USA. Within the next two years his film career was stalled. The public thought he was on a leave of absence from Hollywood, one paper columnist posted no films for James Edwards. Is it because of Hollywood burgeoning post-war economic problems? Or is it because the film industry was unequipped or unwilling to make pictures featuring serious black male actors in roles that were not stereotyped? Just a year before 20th Century Fox announced that they were casting James in the lead role of the black doctor in the film No Way Out, he read for the role and they said the part was his. Right before shooting Mr. Zanuck head of Fox told his agent that they were going with a new face Sidney Poitier. He was signed to appear in another Kramer production called The Man, but the part went to another newcomer Marlon Brando, he was in talks with MGM to be paired up with Lena Horne in the film project The Big Fall, the film never made it past the discussion stage. Ed Sullivan announced that James would join Helen Hayes in his stage production of The Wisteria Trees, instead Ossie Davis was cast in the play. At the same time, James was in talks to play the lead in Cry the Beloved Country, again the role eventually went to Sidney Poitier. Hollywood producers, directors, and head of studios used James' name just to gain press coverage for their projects. Because of pressure from the government, movie makers said they couldn't cast him for leading roles in Hollywood films or New York stage. And when the FBI agents pressured James Edwards to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee and denounce actor Paul Robeson, Edwards refused. Was James Edwards wrong, to use his career as a platform for civil rights and justice, at a time when equality for the Negro race was still just a dream? He once said, I can still see the faces of those lost young black men and women I met while out promoting Home of the Brave. They had such hope in their eyes, they told me I give them hope. All their lives they've been told they were nothing but a bunch of no good Negroes. I told them they were somebody. I told them to be proud of who they are and what they are. James Edwards never stopped talking about civil rights, 
in the late 1960s he spoke to a classroom of young black actors, he said, you young kids today don't know what it was like 20 years ago in 1949, every black kid today is shouting say it loud I'm black and I'm proud. If you would have said something like that back in the day, your proud black ass would have been Lynch. No. I wasn't going to just stand on the sideline and be a good little negro actor and say nothing and do nothing just to make Hollywood happy. I owed it to my people. I owed it to myself, to speak out. Yes, I had bills to pay. Rent. Put food on my table. Put clothing on my back. I, James Edwards the regular guy from Indiana wouldn't appear in another film for almost two years. How could this be? Maybe it was because I was an proud black man. Maybe it was because the FBI was on my ass and no Hollywood studio wanted any parts of a FBI probe. At any rate, I kept myself in the public eye and capitalized on my celebrity. I worked in the old medium of radio, made recordings, appeared in live theater, had a grueling schedule of speaking engagements, personal appearances, and explored my options as a stage director. My agent told me I was lucky. He told me because I was a lieutenant in the US Army, the industry wasn't going to blacklist me. They were only going to grey list me. Meaning I can work in Hollywood films but only as a character actor, but no longer as a lead actor, and to rub salt on the wound, this silly white bitch, columnist Dottie Kilgallen from The Hollywood Reporter did a cover story on it. So you want to be a movie star? James Edwards, the young actor who won plaudits as the soldier in Home of the Brave, he'll never get another starring role film offer in Hollywood, never. She was right. I was cast in co-starring roles as such films like, The Setup, Manhandled, The Steel Helmet, The Member of the Wedding, The Joe Lewis Story, The Kane Mutiny, Seven Angry Men, The Phoenix City Story, The Killing, Battle Him, Men in War, Fräulein, Anna Locasta with Eartha Kitt, Frederick O'Neill, Rosetta L. Enoir, and Sammy Davis Jr., Night of the Quarter Moon, Pork Chop Hill, Blood, and Steel, The Manchurian Candidate, The Sandpiper starring Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, and Charles Bronson. The Young Runaways, Coogan's Bluff, Patton, and many more. Hollywood told director Otto, if he cast me opposite Dorothy Dandridge in Carmen Jones, they wouldn't finance the film. So after weeks of doing a screen testing with Eartha Kitt, Joyce Bryant, Diane Carroll and Miss Dandridge, to find the perfect Carmen. I was told by Otto he couldn't cast me in the lead or in the film at all. James Edwards did find some success in Hollywood, behind the scenes. James Edwards became one of the first blacks to write and direct for network television. So. The next time you go to the cinema and you see a gorgeous black leading actor on the silver screen, think of James Edwards. Then and only then, James Edwards will no longer be a forgotten Hollywood icon.